All right, folks, so today we're just going to do a quick video talking a little bit about the Nano VNA H4. It's one of the newer models of Nano VNA, and it's an upgrade over the version H that I currently have. I'm not going to get in detail about a bunch of specifications and uh, technical things. What I wanted to discuss in this video is how hams can use these to get up and running quickly. So it's kind of a made easy type video. One of the things is, is that these devices are insanely popular and they are priced for budget-minded consumers. So a lot of people buy these and they often get overwhelmed because they seem difficult and they're capable of doing lots of things. It's not an SWR uh, meter that you would pick up that is what we would consider like a point and shoot meter. It does require some calibration and it does require some configuration in order to use it. But uh, hopefully in this video I've made it pretty easy for you to get up and running with your Nano VNA. So here's the H4 that we're going to be using in this particular video. I got it from rnl.com or RNL Electronics. Um, they had a sale on these and I picked it up for about $70. And I'm very happy that I did. I like it much more than the original Nano VNA. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. The H4 comes in a pretty fancy box. I don't think this is the box you want to keep it in if you're going to travel around with the H4. You can see in this quick comparison that the regular Nano VNA or the version 1 comes in a small plastic case, which makes it quite portable. The issue with the original version is, is the screen is too small and is very difficult to see. And that's what drove my decision to buy the H4. Inside the box you see many different components. It's almost exactly the same as the original. It does come with this instruction sheet, which should make things really easy for you. As you can see, it's quite easy to understand and it's consumable. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, it's actually pretty confusing, and you probably need a tutorial or some help uh, getting these things up and running. And then here it is in a different language. I'm not sure what language this is, but I think that says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel. Let's see what else we have in here. The first thing is these calibration standards. They come with various standards. This one is the 50 ohm load. Now this one is difficult to get out of the case. And this is the open standard. We'll use these when we do the calibration of the Nano VNA H4. And last, we have the short. And we use this to generate a short condition during the calibration. Let's take a look at the Nano VNA itself. Again, this is the H4 4 inch version. We gotta take this plastic off because I hate that stuff. There's an on off switch at the top of the device. A USB C style port at the bottom of the device for connecting to a computer or powering. Here's the on off switch. And then a jog wheel, which is nicely done on this particular unit. Much better than the original Nano VNA. We also come with this female to female barrel connector and we will use this to attach other standards antennas or our through cables to each other. Here is a USB-C cord and then we can use this to charge from a USB-C device. And then here is the more traditional USB cord to USB-C. That's the one we're going to use to connect to the computer. It also comes with this lanyard and this guitar pick style stylus. I don't like using these, so I use a regular tablet stylus. And then here are our two coax jumpers, or through cables as I referred to them earlier in this video. They are both SMA male connectors. As mentioned, I just use this cheap stylus. I got it somewhere along the way and I don't remember exactly where. Let's take a quick look at the Nano VNA. And as you can see, when you turn these on, the screens are very confusing and often intimidating to new users. I wanted to do a quick size comparison, and you can see why I did the upgrade. The Nano VNA in the white case is using a printed, 3D printed case that I picked up to give it some more durability and to reduce interference. The Nano VNA was not fully charged, so I connected it to this Anchor Power Core 2 to get it charged up for the rest of this video. It's quite simple to do. Now the Nano VNA is capable of providing some very complex measurements, charts, and graphs. And we don't need all of that if we're just starting out and using this for ham radio. Most folks that ask me questions about this just simply want to test SWR or impedance. 
A click in the upper right hand corner will pull up the menu. And we're going to go down and we're going to select CAL or CAL because we want to calibrate our device. So I picked the top option for calibrate. And then here I'm presented with the open, short, load, isolation, and through metrics. Or calibration settings, I should say. We're going to start by connecting our open calibration standard to channel 0 or the S11 port. Once this is done, we're going to come over and we're going to click the open option in the menu. Now it moves down to short and we have to install the short calibration standard. On the lower portion of the Nano VNA, you'll see our start and stop is at 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz. This would be the short standard that we're installing now. So our calibration is for a full sweep from 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz. You will likely want to restrict the span for your frequencies that you're interested in testing. So now we click on short and it takes it down to load. So once again, we have to switch the calibration standard to the load calibration standard, which is 50 ohms resistance. Once that's on, we click load. Now this is all you have to do if you want to do SWR and your Smith chart measurements. But we are going to do, for the sake of this video, the isolation and the through calibrations as well. It only takes a few seconds. And then for this, we're going to connect the coax cables that we saw earlier in the video. Because this is an isolation calibration, we just want to connect our cables and then leave them disconnected from each other. And then in the menu option, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select isolation. Now we drop down to through. We have to use the barrel connector supplied with the device to connect these two cables. With the cables connected, we're going to go ahead and run the calibration. All we have to do is click on the through option in the menu. After that, we're going to click done and we're going to save this to slot one. Now one thing to note again, this is the span that we calibrated to. If you want to use different frequencies, you'll have to set that and we'll show you that now. From the upper right hand corner, you activate the menu and then pick the stimulus option. From here, you want to pick start and then you can type in your start frequency. Let's go ahead and just pick seven megahertz. Now you can see that change in the lower left hand corner. Now I'm going to pick my stop frequency and we'll just pick 50 megahertz. You can see the change at the bottom of the device. So after changing my frequencies, here it goes all the way up to 100, I can recall my calibration by activating the menu and then going down to the recall option and pick recall one because that's where I saved my memory or my calibration to slot one. And now you can see we're back at 50 to 900. So here's an antenna that I hung up in my backyard. It's the MCOM3 from Chameleon Antennas in an inverted V configuration. I've connected my Nano VNA to the antenna coax cable. Using the technique shown earlier in the video, I've set my start and stop stimulus to 13.5 megahertz and I ended at 14.5. That's because I want to do a sweep of the 20 meter band. I also did the open, short, and load calibration, just as we shown before, and I saved it to slot 2. Using a jog wheel, I can move my markers across the line, and you can see the various frequency changes up in the white text in the upper right-hand corner. And you can see right here at 14.250, I've got an SWR of 1 to 1 1.89. When I turn the device off, it will reboot and then go to its stock configuration. Again, I want to just recall and then go down to slot 2. And when I pick this, it goes right back to my calibration for 20 meters. So it's a good idea to save these for any sweeps on any types of antennas for your interested frequencies. Also from the display, I can pick various options if I want to change the trace information that I'm looking at. So I pick trace and I can toggle them on and off just by clicking on the trace number, which is pretty handy. But let's say here we pick trace one and we want to change the format. We have different options available. It's a two menu deep system. 
And then just for the sake of this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick delay. And you can see my screen populates with a bunch of information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go back in and I'm going to change this to a different display. Let's pick log mag. And there you can see a flat line. It doesn't tell me much in this particular case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm just going to turn this trace off. Hopefully this video gives you the basics and gives you an opportunity to get up and run in with your nano VNA and testing some simple things on your antenna systems like SWR and checking your impedance. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, or recommendations, I'd love to hear them and I'll do my best to respond to those as well. Thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate it.